Following a comprehensive three-year investigation by my office, including witnesses, interviews with more than 65 witnesses, and review of millions of documents that were submitted by Mr. Trump and others, I am announcing that today we are filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump for violating the law as part of his efforts to generate profits for himself, his family, and his company. The complaint demonstrates that Donald Trump falsely inflated his net worth by billions of dollars to unjustly enrich himself and to cheat the system, thereby cheating all of us. He did this with the help of the other defendants, his children, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and Eric Trump and former Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg and Trump Organization controller Jeffrey McConney. Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization repeatedly and persistently manipulated the value of assets to induce banks to lend money to the Trump Organization on more favorable terms than would otherwise have been available to the company, to pay lower taxes, to satisfy continuing loan agreements and to induce insurance companies to provide insurance coverage for higher limits and at lower premiums. This conduct was all in violation of Executive Law Section 6312, which gives the Attorney General broad and special powers to go after persistent and repeated fraud and illegality. As part of demonstrating illegality under that section of Law 6312, we show that they violated several state criminal laws, including falsifying business records, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, and engaging in a conspiracy to commit each of these state law violations. We believe the conduct alleged in this action also violates federal criminal law, including issuing false statements to financial institutions and bank fraud. And we are referring those criminal violations that we've uncovered to the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York and the Internal Revenue Service. As a result of these violations, we are asking the court to, among other things, permanently bar Mr. Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, Eric Trump, from serving as an officer or director in any corporation or similar, similar entity registered and or licensed in New York, to bar Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization from entering into any New York State commercial real estate acquisition or from applying for loans from any financial institution in New York for five years to pay for the financial benefits obtained as a result of the persistent fraudulent practices at an estimated $250 million. The examples I laid out just barely scratch the surface of the misconduct that we have uncovered. The complaint, which all of you should have a copy, is more than 280 pages long. It includes examples from 23 assets that were grossly and fraudulently inflated. And those inflated values were used on Mr. Trump's statements almost every year. All told, we uncovered more than 200 examples of false and misleading asset valuations that were used on his statements. The pattern of fraud and deception that was used by Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization for their own financial benefit is astounding. Inflating the values of assets by whatever means necessary to increase Mr. Trump's purported net worth. And then that net worth, net worth was used to further enhance his financial standing, intentionally misrepresenting his, financial, his financials to obtain incredible economic benefit. It was a scheme that by its very nature became more profitable over time. And it is all in stark violation of the law.
This is New York Attorney General Letitia James announcing a $250 million lawsuit against Trump and multiple family members and associates, including Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, for violating the law as part of a scheme to generate profits. They're accused of committing a raft of crimes, including falsifying business records, uh, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, engaging in conspiracy to violate state law, issuing false statements to financial institutions, and bank fraud, or as Donald Trump would call it, Tuesday. Among other crimes, Trump overstated the value of his assets, allowing him to derive massive financial benefit, since he was able to leverage those inflated assets so that he could, for example, take out loans, and higher assets would be more favorable amounts and more favorable terms. At the same time, he would immediately understate those same assets' values to minimize his tax implications. And if this seems like something that's relatively easy to assess, that should give you some insight into just how freely Donald Trump has always been willing to commit crimes. Now, it's worth noting that Trump did have the opportunity to settle with the AG's office. According to the New York Times, Trump's lawyers had made at least one settlement offer, which the Times reported as being rejected by the AG. That was, of course, confirmed when the AG announced today's lawsuit. That likely shows that either the Trump team's offer was too low, which wouldn't be surprising, or that the AG's evidence against Trump was too good, which, again, wouldn't be surprising. But either way, that part of the process is clearly over as Letitia James moves ahead with the suit. I should mention, too, that Trump did have the opportunity to defend himself. He was deposed by the New York AG's office and invoked the fifth more than 440 times, which is weird because I seem to remember... Trump saying this about the fifth. The mob takes the fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the fifth so they're not prosecuted. When you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the fifth, I think it's disgraceful. Have you seen what's going on in front of Congress? Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment. Horrible. Horrible. All right. I got to say, if you let these people talk enough, eventually they'll tell on themselves. And on that point, because this is a civil trial, the jury would be able to draw a negative inference based on Trump invoking the fifth, as opposed to a criminal trial where invoking the fifth can never be introduced as evidence against you. Here's my interview with Glenn Kirshner where he explains exactly that. Now that has some consequences, as you say. First of all, it completely tanks. It guarantees that he will lose this civil case if it goes to trial, because you know, a negative inference is a mouthful, but what the jury will actually be told during the trial when Attorney General James is trying to shut down the Trump organization and make them pay a bazillion dollars in penalties and fines, the jury will be told Donald Trump, when given the opportunity to offer up his defense, to defend his actions, to explain that he did nothing wrong, he invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, which means if he had testified, he would have incriminated himself. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you can factor that in when you're trying to decide whether to rule for or against Donald Trump. So his case is sunk. Now, don't forget that this isn't the only investigation or lawsuit that Trump is contending with. He's also in legal jeopardy in Fulton County, Georgia, for having pressured the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, to find 11,780 votes, exactly one more vote than he lost by, because as we all know, when Donald Trump commits crimes, he values discretion. He's under investigation by the DOJ for stealing classified documents from the White House, for which a search warrant was executed last month at Mar-a-Lago. He's also under investigation for the January 6th insurrection by both the federal government and the January 6th committee in Congress. There's the Westchester County criminal probe focused on whether the Trump org misled local officials about the value of its golf course to lower its tax burden. There's a lawsuit in DC over Trump overpaying its business for space at the Trump International Hotel during the inauguration. And there's the Manhattan criminal case led by Alvin Bragg, also concerning Trump's property valuations. And the fact that I'm not even sure I listed them all is a testament to the abject corruption and criminality that we've come to expect from Trump, his family, and his company. Now, of course, as certain as the day is long, Trump will point to these lawsuits and investigations as evidence not of his criminality, but of his purported innocence. He took to Truth Social today and wrote, quote, another witch hunt by a racist attorney general, Letitia James, who failed in her run for governor, getting almost zero support from the public, and is now doing poorly against law and order AG candidate, highly respected Michael Henry. I never thought this case would be brought until I saw her really bad poll numbers. She's a fraud who campaigned on a Get Trump platform, despite the fact that the city is one of the crime and murder disasters of the world under her watch. 
Yeah, um, first off, Trump calling the black attorney general racist is really something. Leave it to the rich old white guy to pull the race card. But second, and more importantly, this is what Trump does. He points to every attempt to hold him accountable for his very blatant criminality as if it's some witch hunt. He'll say the fact that he's being investigated is proof that he's being unfairly targeted because Trump's entire strategy is to paint himself as the victim. And so because he'll always just claim that he's on the receiving end of some unjust witch hunt, that gives him carte blanche to continue committing crimes, knowing full well that he'll inevitably fall back on his usual whining about being the victim. In a way, it's the perfect formula for him because the more crimes Trump commits, the more those announcements feed into his narrative of being a target, and so they only bolster his talking points. But here's the important part. While that might work in the court of public opinion, which, for example, is helpful if you're a politician wielding the power of your office, Trump is no longer in office, and, to be honest, it doesn't matter what public opinion says at this point, because as these probes move into the courtroom, Trump will lose his most potent defense, which are his lies. So at this point, take Trump's whining with a grain of salt, because what he says doesn't matter. Remember, he had the opportunity to defend himself in this case, and he chose to plead the fifth on every last question except his name. And if his name is the only thing he's willing to tell the truth about, then that offers a pretty clear indication about where this case will go. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.